Hey folks, it's me again, RiggerM71, and this is a computer game. This is a gaming computer. This is a bedroom television. I pose the question, how do you get this from this to this? Well, apparently, you can use this. Recently, in an effort to move into gamers' living rooms, Valve released three devices, the Steam Machine, the Steam Controller, and of course the Steam Link. The Steam Machine is essentially a fully-fledged gaming computer running Steam OS and fitted into a small attractive case. It's designed to fit in with the rest of your living room entertainment devices. The Steam Controller is Valve's answer to replacing the keyboard and mouse for living room gaming purposes. Lastly, the Steam Link is a $50 streaming device geared toward allowing users to pipe their games from their existing computers and onto any other display currently in their home, usually a television. In the case of the Steam Machine, it isn't exactly cheap. Regardless of what type of unit you choose, it will set you back at least a few hundred dollars. The ones really worth getting will set you back even more than that. The price, coupled with the fact that their small form factor doesn't exactly allow much in the way of upgrading, is probably enough to put most gamers off from purchasing one. My guess is that Valve probably figured that out on their own. Their answer was, of course, the Steam Link. Visually speaking, there isn't exactly much to look at on the Steam Link. It's just a black box, not much bigger than the palm of my hand, and my hand ain't that big. There's one rounded corner at the front, and on the back you'll find an HDMI port, an Ethernet jack, two USB 2.0 ports, and a spot to plug in the power connector. There's also one extra USB port on the side, giving you a total of three. I should mention the complete lack of a power button. While the unit can be turned off from within Steam, actually turning it on requires using a controller. Hitting a key on my keyboard or holding down the left mouse button also appears to work. Setting the thing up is pretty straightforward. You simply hook it up to a TV or monitor and plug in your input device. Although it does support wireless, you'll have a much less frustrating experience if you simply run a network cable to it directly from your router. In fact, Valve actually recommends you go that route. After that, you simply run through a short setup process, and then you should theoretically be ready to use the device. And I'll talk more about that theoretically here in a bit. The hardware uses Steam Big Picture mode for all of its navigation and launching of games, so you're pretty much required to log into Steam whenever using the device. As for controller options, you're granted a plethora of choices. In addition to the actual Steam controller, it will recognize a wide variety of console controllers, as well as various keyboards and mice. In my case, I made a feeble attempt to use a wired gamepad, but trying to configure the buttons to work the way I needed them to was far too much effort. Maybe the actual Steam controller makes this process a bit easier. Instead, I simply hooked up a Logitech wireless mouse and keyboard combo. It uses one of those little 2.4 GHz nano USB receivers, and I wasn't sure if it would work, but the Steam Link picked it up just fine. Maybe that's going against the whole console experience thing, but it's what works for me. Don't judge me. Now let's get back to that theoretical thing I mentioned earlier. The first time I tried a game on the Steam Link, it looked like ass. The frame rate was terrible and the picture was grainy and full of artifacts. So, after a brief period of disappointment, I decided to take a look at the manual. Well, this is the manual. Apparently Valve decided to cut down on printing costs by eliminating a few non-essential items. You know, like words. So yeah, not a lot of help there. More disappointment. Fortunately, browsing several forum topics on getting the Steam Link up and running yielded better results. It became apparent that the unit's hardware encoding option was set to Intel and NVIDIA by default. Well, that's great for most people, but if you're a peasant like me, you're probably using an AMD card. Yeah, it was using software encoding. Turning that crap off and enabling the AMD encoding option fixed the issue. Everything looked pretty good after that. It's also worth mentioning that I changed the bandwidth limit from automatic to unlimited. This also made a noticeable improvement. It says that option can introduce latency, but I haven't noticed anything. I can only assume it's referring to wireless. Maybe I'm missing something, but since I'm getting the stream through an actual network cable, there shouldn't be much of an issue there. Oh yeah, here's another thing. 
While you are allowed to add non-Steam games to your library and start them from within Steam Big Picture, it seems to have a problem with some titles. My copy of Amnesia the Dark Descent came directly from Frictional Games' website and would hang on the launcher every time. I eventually had to point it toward the actual game executable and bypass the launcher completely. After that it worked fine. I guess Steam Big Picture doesn't like windowed launchers. Steam Big Picture wants to be your launcher. You will be assimilated. Aside from that, I haven't had many issues. The device works surprisingly well for something that only costs 50 bucks. If you're thinking of getting one, you'll want to make sure you have a decent display. You'll either need another monitor or a TV with an HDMI port. You'll also want to make sure it supports a decent resolution, such as 1080p at 60 Hz, as well as the ability to turn off the majority of post-processing effects that most modern televisions tend to use. After all, you're not trying to watch HBO, you're trying to play a game. The other thing you'll need, of course, is a gaming-capable computer. That should probably be obvious, but if your games look like shit on your PC, they won't look any better through your Steam link. So, the big question. Should you get one? Well, if you're like me and want an inexpensive way of getting your PC games into another room, I'd have to say yes. Assuming, of course, you're willing to tinker with some of the settings to optimize performance. That being said, the Steam Link does what it's supposed to do, and it does it for very little in the way of cash. 50 foot Ethernet cable not included. Well, I guess that about covers it. If anything here was remotely helpful or entertaining, I'd certainly appreciate a like or subscribe. Also, if you have any comments or questions regarding anything that was discussed here, you can certainly leave them below. So, until next time, take care, and of course, have fun.